Hey y'all. Long time lurker, first time poster. I thought I would share my encounter with the creep I met at the end of my trip back home to Arizona. For a little backstory. I went to visit my best friend who had moved from Arizona to California. It was fun, until the end, where we got into a fight resulting in cutting the trip a day short. The morning of, I packed my stuff and took an Uber to the Greyhound and exchanged my ticket for a ride that day. However, the next bus didn't leave until 4pm and it was probably around 10.30am. I was so upset about my fight with my friend the night before that this five and a half hour wait was just a little cherry on top of it all. I ended up going to a small grocery store and getting a few apples for the trip, then heading back and waiting at the gate where my bus would arrive. And that's where I met Jeremy. He was sitting on the phone talking real loud, and I couldn't help but observe him. He was a mid-30-year-old bald guy with a mustache, wearing a wife beater, dickies, crew socks, and a baby blue bandana he kept rearranging. He'd tie it to his neck, hang it out of his pocket, or simply wrap it around his wrists. I know you're not supposed to judge, but I just kind of knew to keep my distance from this guy just in case. So here I am opening my bag looking for an apple, when he looks over at me and asks if I'm hungry. I respond, oh, no thanks, I'm actually just looking for my apple. He says, I have plenty of candy I don't even really want. Here, just take some. He hands me some Snickers and Laffy Taffies and stuff. I knew right away that this was a little weird, so I put them in my backpack for later. I was just planning on throwing them away when he wasn't looking. 4pm arrives and so does our bus. We get in and the bus driver lets us know that we needed to stop in another city nearby to switch buses, so we all get off, and I head to the line where the new bus is going to be. Jeremy flags me down and says, Hey, I saved you a spot. I say back, Oh, it's okay, thanks. These two little old Asian ladies are sitting near him thanking him for saving them a spot and talking to him like they knew him and he was just as friendly. He kept on insisting that I come over there. I thought, let's not cause a scene, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I go over and thank him and wait for the bus and he says, do you have a dollar by chance? I gave him one and he goes and grabs a coke and comes back with it. For you? he said and handed it to me. I was clearly confused before he said, you look like you could use it. I was a little put off, but not too bad. Once the bus started loading us in, I sat down and he came and sat right beside me and said, lucky we got seats next to each other. He took out his laptop and put some headphones in. Oh, good, I'll be left alone, I thought. Wrong. Here, grab the other headphone so we can watch a movie together. Obviously I declined, but he kept insisting, even though the internet wasn't working on that bus, so he couldn't play a movie anyways. So he resorted to trying to talk. He asked a lot of questions about me and if I had a boyfriend. I did, and he asked if we were ever going to get married. That was where I finally got put off, but also tried to be engaging enough to not piss him off, because they don't check your luggage at the Greyhound and I didn't want to know what he had toting around in his big bags. That sounds bad, but I was just trying to be safe. Then he starts telling me he was in California taking care of his sick dad, and that he was heading to Texas to see his estranged wife and kids. He told me about how much he missed them, and how he couldn't wait to go back home and be a part of their lives again. While he's saying this, he's toying with a little piece of paper he took out of his pocket in his hands, and I glanced over at it without even thinking. He lifts up the paper and says, Oh yeah, I met a lady. Very nice. Filipino. We had a very good time last night and she gave me some drinks from her homeland for my trip. You want one? I shook my head no, but he tried to give me one anyways. It was sort of like a Jumex, a canned fruit drink, and I told him it was okay, but he grabbed himself one too and said cheers. Then he started going on about this lady and asking me for advice. Should I call her or do you think that would make my wife mad? I stared at the drink, thinking how could I get out of the bus, and he says, well, aren't you going to drink it? 
I opened the can and took a fake sip and said it was really good or something along those lines. Then he smiled at me. When he smiled, I was disgustingly uneasy. His teeth were dark yellow and partially black. Very, very crooked teeth. And plaque for days. I mean layers of this stuff all over his mouth. I worked in a dental office, mind you, and those teeth were amongst the most disgusting I've ever seen. Not to mention he reeked of vomit and cigarettes. I wanted to throw up, and instantly wanted to leave, but it was a packed bus in the middle of the desert, and no security, so I thought, for now, I won't do anything. He started asking me if I go to church, and told me he had a very special book for me. He handed me some children's Jesus sing-along book, and told me it was very dear to him and he wanted me to keep it. I took it and thanked him. I was being short with him at this point because I wanted to avoid his breath, which was nauseating. Cut to many stops later, around 10 or 11. Everyone starts falling asleep, and so does he, but he falls asleep with his legs wide open, and they were rubbing up against my thigh, so I sat with my chin to knees, sobbing softly so he wouldn't hear me. I was so uncomfortable and scared because I didn't know what kind of person he was, and I couldn't sit anywhere else because the bus was full. The lights were dim on the bus too, so nobody saw me, but I wish somebody could. I cried for maybe an hour before he woke up and started trying to rest his head on my shoulder. He started mumbling beautiful and sexy, and I thought I was hearing wrong, but I still texted my boyfriend, telling him about the creep and what I thought I heard him say. My boyfriend told me maybe I was overreacting, but I would be home soon nonetheless. While I'm texting my boyfriend, I noticed Jeremy glancing over at my phone a lot and kind of saw what was coming, so I opened my maps to check and see how long the ride was till I got home. Jeremy mumbles what I knew he would. Who are you texting? Let me see. I show him my maps app, and told him I was just checking to see where we were at. So then Jeremy sits up and starts mumbling again, but a little clearer. You're so pretty. You're a very pretty girl, you know that? And he touches my thigh. I was shook, to say the least. All I could manage to say was, why are you doing this? Because you're so sexy. You're just so pretty. He said this while opening his legs more and more. At this point, I don't even hide it. I just clearly text my boyfriend panicking, and Jeremy says, Let me see your phone, little girl. I ignore his demand, and then he let his head fall on my shoulder. I pushed it off, and he kept mumbling like he was falling back asleep. The bus driver later stopped and told us we were at a gas station if anyone needed anything. Jeremy is awake now, and pretending like one hour ago didn't even happen. He hands me a $100 bill and told me to get us some snacks. I told him I was fine, and he said, Okay, I'll get us some honey buns and drinks, and gets out. And this was my chance. I grab all my stuff and head to the bus driver, and told him what happened but he said he couldn't do anything because he didn't technically do anything to me and just freaked me out. The bus driver suggested I sit with someone else in the meantime. I look for the friendliest face I could before I see this really nice looking guy who looks a lot like my favorite uncle, so I took solace in him. I didn't even realize I was crying until I tried explaining to him the situation as brief as possible and he understood enough through the panic and told me to sit near the window and he would cover for me. I look in the reflection of the bus window to see Jeremy get on and head towards the back. He notices I wasn't there and started looking around frantically. Melanie? Melanie? And the doors close and the bus driver starts back on the road. The new person I'm sitting next to begins to tell me he thought we were riding together as did all the other passengers. They all thought he was either my uncle or just a creepy looking life partner. I cried so hard when he said that because I told him I felt helpless, and nobody seemed to care. He just comforted me and told me I would be gone and away from this all soon enough, and he was right. By the time I got to my station, it was 4.20 a.m., and I breathed a sigh of relief. My boyfriend picked me up, and I told him what happened, but we never saw that guy again. It was Monday. December 1st, 2008, and I was 15, when I got sexually assaulted by some random creeper on public transit in Calgary, Alberta. 
Uh, typically in December here, it's below freezing, but it was during a Chinook, so it was moderately warm for a December morning. I decided since it was so nice out that I'd wear my skirt and some awesome knee-ish high boots to school. I ended up catching the bus at 7am right on time. I walked to the middle of the bus and sat down. I did notice the man in the back corner two seats down from me talking. I looked back to him, and he smiled at me, so I smiled back. He was at least in his mid-fifties. He was East Indian and wore a baseball cap. He patted his seat and said, Sit beside me. I told him that I was quite alright where I was and apologized. I turned around and shuffled through my purse when he got up and sat beside me. He started asking me how I was. I obliged only because I didn't really know what else to say. And then he grabbed my knee and said, You're a beautiful baby. His other hand then grabbed my hand, and he continued, I love your mouth, your lips, your eyes, your mole. You're so very pretty. Now if these weren't any warnings for the upcoming events, I'm not really sure what would be. I responded with thanks and just tried to stare forward. He noticed that I wasn't looking at him, and he sternly said, Look at me. I just remember staring at him for the rest of the bus ride. He continued with, I have a fine arts major, and I take pictures of children and return them to the subjects as adults. They thank me so much when I do. I get this feeling of joy from them. I responded short and cold with, Oh, cool. Hoping maybe that would shut him up, or at least just get it over with so he could leave me alone. Again, he continued, If I could just get your phone number. He pointed to my cell phone and showed me his hand of other people's numbers. I'll give you a call and we can set up a date and time, and I'll bring my camera. Quickly in my head, I remembered a Criminal Minds episode and told him that this was my mother's phone and she's just lending it to me for now. He sighed and asked me, Are you married? I responded with a short no, and he just continued, You can love a monkey, you can love a dog, but you can't love a person? I nodded and looked out the window. Finally, it was time to get off. Being that I was wearing a skirt and he had pinned me in the window seat, I rang the bell and said, Excuse me. He didn't move. I looked at him, and he mentioned to step over him. Wanting to get the hell out of Dodge, I stepped over him hoping to make it as quick as possible. As I was stepping over, he reached up and grabbed my skirt and grabbed my ass. I jumped over and stared at him and you just said the words, Fine Arts Center. I didn't really get to process what happened until halfway through my first period class at 9am. That was when I started to second guess my decisions. I ran out of my class to my TA and called the police and my parents. Now the police said they couldn't do anything. They actually got mad at me for not going to the bus driver. It's a pretty busy bus as it is, and for not coming to the police sooner. This happened to my younger sister, and gave me goosebumps when she told me about it. I've tried to get across the story in the manner in which she recounted it to me. In our town, the bus station is a little gray lot next to a small shopping center. It's basically 12 bus bays under a concrete roof, and because our council has no money, it's a bit of a dump. There are lights, but they don't work at all, and there are very rarely any other workers out there. So picture this scene. A 16-year-old girl enters the bus station in the evening, after meeting with friends who have all gone their separate ways. There are no buses in the station. It's dark and the lights are flickering. As she makes her way across to the empty bus bay, she notices that she's not completely alone. Sat across the terminal from her, occasionally illuminated by the broken lights and staring right at her, is a shabby old man wearing a long coat. As she takes her seat, he stands up and starts shuffling over to her. At this point, it's another ten minutes until her bus is due. Her heart sinks and she goes into defensive mode. He draws closer to her and sits down on the bench next to her. Are you getting a bus to Blankton? Is that where you live? He asks. He stinks. The smell of him, body odor and filth, is so strong that she can almost hear it. 
She can feel the smell of him radiating off, almost buzzing. It makes her ears itch and her skin crawl. He has a few rotting teeth, a scraggly matted beard, and a stained bandage around his middle. He's clutching a plastic bag which also smells horrible. Edging across the bench, she has no idea how to respond. Yes, I'm waiting for the bus, she says, trying to remain polite, hoping that the bus might turn up early. She cranes her head around, looking for a bus driver, a security guard, anyone. All she can see is the flickering lights. I think I'll wait with you, he says. His plastic bag is swinging back and forth, and each time the top opens, a flash of a disgusting wet smell comes from inside it. A bus pulls into the bay he had originally been sat at, and she points to it desperately. Uh, isn't that your bus, sir? Oh no, he replies, grinning. I'm just waiting. She reaches into her bag and pulls out her phone. I've just remembered something, she says. She decides to call her mother to come pick her up. She'll wait in the safety of the cafe nearby. She can't spend another second sitting next to this creepy man. As she stands up, she gets a glimpse of the contents of the plastic bag. The bottom of her stomach feels as though it's fallen away, and her fingers go numb. She turns on her heels and runs to the cafe without any further pretense of politeness. Though she can hear him calling after her, she doesn't hear what he says. It was a dead cat, she told me later. He was sitting there holding a bloody dead cat. I never go to that bus station alone anymore. I ride public transportation. I hate it, but it's my only option right now. With the cost of college books, classes, and everything else under the sun, I couldn't add the toll of gas to that long list of expenditures. I wake up in the morning and catch a bus that takes me into town and then I transfer to another bus that takes me to school. The process is reversed after school. I end up getting on four different buses every day, and there's many other stories I could tell about the mysterious and unusual occurrences that happen while traveling on these magical vehicles. This technically started a few months ago, and at the time I thought nothing of it. Once in a while people will approach me and we'll have a small discussion, but this didn't quite turn out like the other times. I was standing at the bus station waiting for the bus I used to go home to arrive. A short Hispanic man, maybe around 30 to 40 years old with a thick accent, black hair and a crooked smile, was beaming at me about 10 feet from where I was standing. You know that feeling you get when you know someone is about to talk to you, even when they're really far away? This is the feeling I got, and I was right. A few minutes later he walked towards me and asked where he could get a bus pass. I answered his question, and he asked a few more. The bus at this point pulled in, and we were on our way on board. I sat down towards the back because it's more secluded, and I like keeping to myself during the hour-long bus ride. Unfortunately, this girl whom had just started coming on thought I was cute or something. I'm a guy, and decided to talk to me for the entire ride while being completely disgusting and inappropriate. The windows were foggy so she decided to write boss-ass bitch on one of them, if that gives you an idea of how immature she was. She thought she was impressing me. I was obviously annoyed, and none of the hints I was dropping got to her. The Hispanic man who had gotten on the bus was sitting a couple seats across from me. He noticed the situation and laughed at me. I smiled back at him and gave him the ha-ha very funny look. She got off the bus, and thankfully the terror stopped. I'm usually the last one to get off the bus. Everyone else is usually dropped off before the bus reaches its final destination near my house. I was expecting the Hispanic man to get off directly before my stop in town, where most people get off, and either transfer to a link bus that takes them into the country, or get off at the corner. To my surprise, the Hispanic man hadn't gotten off. Even after getting off the bus myself at my own stop, the Hispanic man remained on the bus. This is odd considering that this is the last and final stop on the route. 
the bus just turns around and heads back to transfer, as this is the end of its long journey. I thought nothing of it, and a few months transpired. The girl still rode the bus frequently and bothered me to an extent, but other than that all had been well. I hadn't seen nor heard from the Hispanic man again. I had been getting unusual activity from my phone, however. My Google account keeps showing that my location is from different parts of my state or city, and search history that I've never looked up lingers in my data. I changed all my passwords, but somehow it still persisted. I checked my device history on Google, and saw that an Apple device was connected to my account. Knowing that I don't own an Apple device, I became alarmed. This unusual activity was going on and off, and I had been battling with it for weeks, so I decided to get a new email. I'm not sure if this relates to it or not, but it doesn't hurt to explain. This is where things get a little weird. A few weeks ago, I was waiting for my bus home again. Just another normal day. Nothing interesting had happened. My bus pulled in and I started to get on. I paid for my ride and looked for a seat, and that's when I heard my name. Josh, how are you? The Hispanic man wearing his same black trench coat sitting in the back of the bus sat with his crooked smile. Oh, uh, hey, I said uncertainly. I'm good? I was surprised, startled, and completely confused. I had never given my name out to anyone on that bus. I know for a fact I had never given my name to him specifically. And even if I did, that was many months ago. How could he have remembered a stranger's name who he barely came into contact with for months? Alerted, I sat down when he continued to talk to me. The annoying girl got on the bus and had a friend with her. They ended up sitting in front of me, and the Hispanic man gave me another smile. Hey, you're not going to talk with your best friend? He said to me jokingly as she talked with her friend. <laughs> nah. I was trying to ignore him by looking out the window. There was a moment of silence from him, and I had thought for sure he wouldn't say anything else for the rest of my ride. I then turned on my phone and started texting my girlfriend, when out of the corner of my eye I catch him taking a picture of me. I know what you're thinking. How do you know he's taking a picture of you? This man was sitting across two seats, directly faced toward me, with his phone held high and pointed straight at me. On top of that, I could see the reflection behind him that he was for sure taking a photo of me. It may have been a video even for how long he held it still. I tried to hide my face, but he continued to stay like that. At least two or three minutes had gone by before he put his phone down and sat normally in his seat again. I texted my girlfriend about what was going on. The moment I sent a text to her saying a crazy guy was taking a picture of me, the Hispanic man started to chuckle while looking at his phone almost as if he was somehow seeing what I sent to my girlfriend from his device. Don't worry, this is just the beginning. So, Josh, where do you go to school again? He said happily. I'm uh, in college, trying to avoid giving him a direct answer. Oh, how nice, how nice. What time do you get out at that college? He said with a smile. I couldn't give him any real information so I proceeded to lie and tell him exactly when I wasn't going to be riding the bus or arriving at school. Around 7.30, I said, trying to seem calm and confident. Oh, nice, okay. So, uh, what time do you get out of school? He said with another beaming smile. Uh, around 12.30, I fibbed. He continued to ask me question after question, and I proceeded to lie and lie. He honestly asked me over 50 questions in the span of about 15 minutes, I would look out the window, pretend like I was talking on the phone and everything, but he wouldn't stop asking me personal questions. You better stay away from this stuff, he said leaning over towards me while taking a prescription bottle out of his coat pocket filled with illegal marijuana, flaunting it at me for a few seconds. Shortly after, the bus started slowly filling up. Each row has two seats, and I had my bag on the one next to me in which I wasn't sitting. The bus is getting full. I'll save my seat for someone else, he said, moving my bag out of the way and sitting right beside me. Our legs were touching, and he moved in just the right time so that every seat in the bus was filled. He then proceeded to ask me more and more questions, all of which were personal. 
Someday I have a feeling you're going to travel all over the world, he said smiling at me with a subtle chuckle. I don't know what he meant by that, but you can only imagine what's going through my head. I started to ask him questions and gathered his information from him in the meantime. He moved from Texas a few months ago to visit his high school friend who apparently lives up here, and he apparently has been applying for jobs at restaurants that were conveniently passing at the time. For example, we would pass by a pizza hut, and then I would hear him say I'm applying at Pizza Hut. Some of the places he mentioned were actually going out of business. I stopped asking him questions, and at this point just wanted to get home. Do you have a pair of earbuds? He asked. Yeah, at home, I said. Here, take these, he said while pulling these grungy looking earbuds out of his coat pocket. I take a look and examine that they had literally been tampered with electronically. There were wires being shown and part of the casing was missing from the actual butt itself. Not to mention they were extremely dirty. No way in hell was I going to take those earbuds. They could have been some kind of tracking device for all I know. No thanks, I said trying to sound polite. Oh, okay. Okay, he said still smiling. Would you like some candy? The man said while pulling out some unnamed candy packaged in a thin plastic bag. I quickly declined the offer. He kept asking me questions along the rest of the ride, such as, What's your last name? And where are your parents? Do you live with them? As we got closer to my stop, as we got closer to my stop, he explained that he had purchased a house. He even showed me a picture. He had just bought a house in my neighborhood, and literally lives next door. I told the bus driver a few days later what had happened, and he immediately called the police. They apparently reviewed the bus cameras, and verified that I was telling the truth. They confronted him, and I haven't heard from him since. I hadn't ridden in a few days, and the bus driver mentioned that he was on the bus again, but at a different time. I asked him what time he had gotten on the bus, and he said at 7.30, around noon. So, like, do you know what this guy was trying to do, or what he wanted from me? I'm seriously looking for some answers. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here as always. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave feedback in the comments below, as well as perhaps like, share, or subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have a personal story that you'd like to submit, or you'd like to just send me a message, Links to all of my social media will be in the description for the video below. This includes my Gmail, Twitter, and Facebook accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the theme of the story is, if it has any, the name of the story, and how you would like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. If you're curious at all about the music used in this video, the music is always listed in the description below, in the order which it appears. I also have links to the artists and list the tracks by name, just in case you want to find more of their work. Last but not least, if you have any criticism, please be sure to leave it in the comments below, as I'm always looking for new ways to improve the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.